Good morning, everybody. Welcome to all of you who are here in church, especially those in our congregation who are here for the first time um, in however many months it is. The church is pretty, it's not full by any means, of course it's not, but it's, we've got the most people we've had here in church since we reopened our building and it's absolutely lovely to see you are all. We're also very glad to welcome um, some of Ivor and Della's family. Uh, it's lovely to have you with us. We know you've had a, a special family meal together. Uh, so Lithan, Ivor and Della's daughter, and Phil, their son-in-law, both URC ministers, uh, and who will also be taking part in our service this morning. And we're also glad to welcome personal friends of Ivor and Delith here in church this morning and uh, friends on Zoom from different parts of the world and especially we're so glad to welcome Gudrun from Sweden and Julian from Montreal. We are an international community this morning just as Ivor's ministry has also been an international one. We all know why this is a special occasion this morning. Ivor is 90 today and taking his final service after 65 years of ministry and 70 years since he preached his first servant sermon. So what an occasion. And we are thankful that after so much ill health, Ivor is in a position to be able to lead us this morning. The other piece of news for today is that for the first time here in UCS, we are allowed to sing in church. Wonderful. And the first time as well that we've had our organ, and we're very grateful to Alan for coming and playing for us this morning. Um, it really makes this occasion even more specially. There are, of course, still a few restrictions with regard to singing. Uh, we will remain seated. We must sing quietly and we must still wear our masks when we sing. Of course, if you're at home, well, feel free to sing as loud as you like. <laughs> it's absolutely great that you can do that. But I think the first thing that we should do on this occasion, the first thing that we should sing this morning is, of course, happy birthday to Ivor. Happy birthday to you. So Ivor will now lead us in the rest of our service. Please note that we are not yet passing an offering plate around, but if you have brought an offering with you, there is a plate on a table uh, that you will pass on your way out. So now we pray that God will speak through Ivor as God has spoken through him throughout his ministry. And I hand over our service, Ivor, to you. Thank you for your greeting and all the greetings I received. <coughs> but now we are here to worship God. I was neither a prophet nor the son of a prophet, but I was a shepherd and I took care of sick or trees. But the Lord took me from tending the flock and said to me, go prophesy to my people Israel. These words of Amos forced, <coughs> forced me into the ministry after months of struggling with the call of Isaiah in chapter 6. We shall return to them later. Then the New Testament reading speaks of Jesus sending out a motley crowd, a group of disciples, to be apostles to the nations. Not a priest or a doctor of the law among them. And later along comes Paul, a doctor of the law, to be the apostle to Europe. 
Two small words appear often in the Bible. In the King James Version, come appears 1,971 times, whilst go appears less times, 1,542. That's what Google says. I wonder if that's the reason so many Christians love come and ignore go. But now we sing our first hymn. Timothy says, God is love, let heavens adore him. No relation, the former Bishop of Sandalf, 103. We continue in prayer. Let us pray. We have many names for you, loving God, because you cannot be captured in a name. Sometimes we're overwhelmed by the majesty of your creation and by your power as creator. That's when we call you omnipotent, mighty king. 
Sometimes our breath is taken away by your timelessness. Our minds are blown away by eternity. <laughs> That's when we call you Alpha and Omega, immortal, invisible, God only wise. We have many names for you, loving God, because you cannot be captured in a name. Sometimes we're moved by your presence in Jesus Christ. That's when we call you Good Shepherd, Prince of Peace. Sometimes our lives are changed by the movement of your spirit. And that's when we call you God with us, comforter, healer. We have many names for you, loving God, because you cannot be captured in a name. And sometimes our language simply falls short. For you are beyond male and female. You are father and mother. You are word and wisdom. You are within and beyond. You are unchanging creator and vulnerable baby. Sometimes you are simply indescribable. You are too close for words and too awesome for description. That's when we sit in silence and contemplate your mystery. We have many names for you, loving God, because you cannot be captured in a name. Be with us as we worship you with words and names from our songs and our prayers. And with a silent response from our hearts and our minds. For we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, name above all names. Amen. During our time of confession, some words will appear on the screen, which I invite you to join in with our prayer of confession. If we claim to be sinless, we are self-deceived and strangers to the truth. If we confess our sin, God is just and may be trusted to forgive our sins and cleanse us from every kind of wrong. So let us admit our sin before God, saying together, Almighty God, in Jesus Christ, you called us to be a servant people, but we do not do what you command. We are often silent when we should speak, when we should be useful. We are lazy servants and heartless who turn neighbours away from your love. Have mercy on us, O God, and though we do not deserve your care, forgive us and free us from sin through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, hear this good news. The love of God is beyond measure, and you are included in that love. So know that you are forgiven, and you are freed to love and to serve. Alleluia. Amen. We join our voices in the words of the Lord's Prayer, which you are invited to say in whichever language comes most naturally to you this morning, or even combination of languages that comes most naturally to you. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our readings tell us of two well-known Go passages. Isaiah is probably a priest from a priestly family and possibly one of the king's advisors. That led me and most of us out of obeying God. They're not from families like that. But Amos is a shepherd and dress of more sycamore fig trees and nobody no one is exempt. Pat will read Isaiah, and then Delith will read from, from Matthew. In the year that King Isaiah died, I saw the Lord seated on a throne, high and exalted, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphs, each with six wings. With two wings they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they were flying. And they were calling to one another, holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. At the sound of their voices, the doorposts and thresholds shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. Woe to me, I cried, I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Then one of the seraphs flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongs from the altar. With it, he touched my mouth and said, see, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, here am I, send me. Amen. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Thanks be to God. We have heard words of scripture, Lord. May your Holy Spirit take hold of him and us, that we may understand what you are saying to us and believe and obey through Jesus Christ. Amen. God said to Isaiah, go, and say to this people. God said to Amos, go and prophesy to my people Israel. But what is the first commandment chronologically? 
It's don't touch the tree. But we were taken in one church outside service to touch trees. So what does it mean to us now? It means trust and obey. And the second command is get out, go. And what does that mean? For us, it means we must live out our faith in this world as it is. Through history, God has said to all his people, come and then go. After that, the call comes to Abraham. The Lord said, go, and Abraham said, went, not knowing where he was going. Sounds as easy as that. He set off on what one scholar called the first missionary journey. Others have followed on the same missionary journey since. <clears throat> Isaiah, the first of the prophets, was one. Here, I am, here am I, he said, and God said, go tell these people. And other people of faith would say, good choice. As I said, he was important. And so we say, I'm not like that. I'm just ordinary, or even less than ordinary. And they never asked, what can I do? Or paid heed to the voice of God. And I fear many of us like that, when called to serve, say, what, me? I'm not good enough. Tell him or her they come from a better family, pillars of the church. One parent is a minister and the other is an elder or a steward. He or she is better educated in the faith, more spiritual. Someone like Isaiah is more suitable. In most churches, there are families following one after another from generation to generation uh, as ministers or priests. We met a priest in America, an Anglican. A direct line of priests back to the Charles II's period. That's what I tried for months. When Isaiah nagged me. I'm not the type. No ministers or deacons or male church members in my family. All of those I knew said they believed in God and they all followed faithfully for the second commandment, love your neighbor. Then God played this dirty trick. He threw Isaiah at me. I was a nobody, said Isaiah, uh, said Amos, and from a family of nobodies. And God said, go tell my people. And I was caught and had to give in, causing a painful shock to those who loved me and were concerned about my well-being. They had decided I was to be a teacher with a good salary in those days and security in those days and respectability in those days. My non-church going father said nothing, but insisted on working overtime to help me financially, and he would allow me no say in the matter. I became a minister in 1956 and retired 40 years later. But some years after my ordination, my mother said, you have done the right thing. I first preached, or to be honest, tried to preach in Swansea. In 1951, pushed to it by the church's minister and some friends, and I chose that ministry today. I served five pastorates. In my eyes, one was difficult most of the time, but was wonderful most of the time, but some people of, some of the same kind were really difficult, and some churches were wonderful. And of course, I had my failings too. No believer is exempt from God's service. It can be to ministry or lay office, 
or something seemingly easy to the people with big jobs. In the last church, I asked a lady to read on Sunday, and later she said how grateful she was that I had persuaded her she would never have dreamt of it before. She wasn't good enough. No Christian is exempt. And using the American phrase, no Christian can be a draft dodger. We all have at least one special gift. They seem very unimportant that we can give back to God. Sometimes we ourselves know what it is other times, other people can tell us. It might be within or outside the church. A lady in my church said to me, give me something big to do. And I said, go and visit Mrs. X. And she said, well, I'm not doing that. I want something big. My thought is that these small things we can do can be very important for God and for other people. My former Anglo-Catholic Anglo Anglo neighbor, Father Peter McGregor, would say often, anyone can be a priest. The hard thing is being a Christian. Jesus calls people to follow him. Would you have called that lot to be his vanguard disciples, fishermen, freedom fighters, quizzings, and not a priest or Pharisee among them, as I said. But from them, he began a second, the second part of God's mission in the world. But I trusted God always, whatever else I couldn't trust. It seems that I had no choice. I'm sure I didn't always obey. We may not know what useful gifts we have, but God knows. And until we are told what they are, we use the gifts we have in any old way, even in the church and outside in the world. God sends us his grace, love for those who do not deserve it. God sends his grace before he sends his tasks. And we are never alone. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. And Horatio Bonner's hymn disappeared from modern hymn books that has spoken to me since early on in my training. Go labor on, spend and be spent. I joy to do the Father's will. It is the way the master trod. Should not the servant, <coughs> should not the servant tread it still. Whatever difficulties I have met, and whatever doubts have bothered me, I have always known that God is present with me. God is always there supporting and healing. Trust in the Lord always. And again, I say, rejoice. And to God be the glory. Thank you, Ivor, for your words this morning. It's hard for me, it's probably hard for all of us to imagine 70 years of preaching and 65 years of ministry. We have among us this morning an ordinary man, yet also such a saint. And it has been a privilege to hear something of your sense of call and how God has worked in your life 
and how you have remained faithful to God in good times and in challenging times, when ministry was fulfilling and when ministry was hurtful. We are grateful, Ivor, that we have been privileged to be with you in your last service. We know that your health issues have meant that this may not have been easy. But we all want to say that we in Uniting Church Sketty are richer for having you and Delith as part of our congregation for the love and support that you show to us all. And I am grateful to have a wise elder colleague who understands what ministry is like. So today, we say to you, Ivor, happy 90th birthday and congratulations on your long and fruitful ministry. I want in a moment to say a prayer of thanksgiving for you and Delith on this special occasion. But before I do that, we would like to give you and Delith some flowers. And as you have requested, a check from the church will go to one of your charities, ABCD. But Jan would now like to come and give you some flowers. We have less hugs in COVID times, but that was a significant one. Let us pray. God and maker and lover of all, on this, his 90th birthday, we give thanks for Ivor, for the way he has lived his life faithfully as a servant and witness to your love and care. We give thanks too for his long years of preaching and ministry, for the ways that he has led his churches and guided his people, for the insights he has shared as he has interpreted scripture, for the ways in which he has followed Jesus in good times and in difficult times. We give thanks to for Delith, who has been by his side, supporting him and offering her own important ministry. We ask your blessing on them both now, as Ivor steps down from preaching, but not from living faithfully. And we pray that in the years ahead, they will continue to know and speak of your presence in the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And Lithan is going to lead us in prayer. Our prayers of intercession. Lord Jesus Christ, you've promised that you are with us always. So we come to worship you and offer our prayers for ourselves and for the world. As you gathered your friends together just before you ascended to heaven, 
So we pray for our friends and family, our companions on the road of discipleship. We pray for our church, Uniting Church Sketty, for our minister Leslie and for all who minister here. We pray for our denominations, the Methodist and the United Reformed Churches. May we here and our brothers and sisters across our denominations and Christians throughout the world find ever new ways to teach, baptize, and make disciples as you have commanded. As we are called to make disciples of all nations, we pray for all nations, particularly those who face times of turmoil. And we pray especially today for the people of Afghanistan. We pray that you will keep people safe, that you will enable those to leave who want to leave, that as a world we will find ways to bring peace and stability there. We pray too for peace for Palestine and for Israel, and in particular we ask your blessings on the agencies working there, remembering particularly ABCD Bethlehem. We pray for those who do not feel safe in the nation of their birth and who flee to find sanctuary elsewhere. Lord, keep them safe and guide them to a welcoming harbour. As we acknowledge your sovereignty over our lives, we recognise that there are others in leadership across the world. So we pray for those who guide the nations. Lord, give them your wisdom, your grace, and a willingness to put first the poorest and the most needy in every community. Loving Jesus, healer of the sick, we remember now those who are ill, those suffering from long-term disabilities, those waiting for tests, those close to death, and those who are grieving. Within a moment of silence, we name those who are on our hearts today. Lord Jesus, you promised your disciples that you would be with them always. Help us to know that we too are your disciples, to hear your words and to know that they are true. You say, I will be with you day after day after day, right up to the end of the age. May we feel your presence with us, guiding and encouraging us in our discipleship walking alongside us and hearing our prayers, said in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, Amen. I've left my notes up there. Jeff, it is 455. 455. All my hope on God is founded, which says it all. And we sing it to the second hymn, the second tune, which is the one it should always be sung to because it's the author's own, own music. So you've sung well despite the masks. So I look forward to this wonderful German chorale. All my hope on God, on God is founded.
Christ calls one and all, you who follow, <coughs> shall not fall. <coughs> shall not fall. Go in peace to love and serve <coughs> the Lord. And may God Almighty bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Atad armab arashpidlan. Amen. Thank you.